You've taken 27 years of joy, laughter, and happiness and ended it in a matter of minutes. This is a monster. 27-year-old Elizabeth Candace Laird, who was affectionately called Candy by her loved ones, had a vision of dedicating her life to helping others. She was only a few weeks away from finishing her studies as a surgical technician and aspired to become a nurse, but sadly, after an encounter in an elevator with a career criminal and registered sex offender, Candace's life would be tragically cut short. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, also known as the Motor City, is a vibrant and historically significant city located in the state of Michigan. The city is renowned as the birthplace of the American automotive industry, with iconic brands such as Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler originating here. Detroit has faced challenges with crime, and historically, it has had higher crime rates compared to national averages. Factors such as economic decline, poverty, and social issues have contributed to these challenges, but Detroit is working towards creating a safer environment for its residents and visitors. Elizabeth Candace Laird, a resident of Detroit, was a bright young lady who had her entire life ahead of her. She graduated from Martin Luther King High School and then became a surgical technologist student with dreams of becoming a nurse. Candace was a kind giving person and always had a desire to help others. On her birthday, she posted on her Facebook. For my birthday this year, I'm asking for donations to the Children's Heart Foundation. I've chosen this nonprofit because their mission means a lot to me, and I hope you'll consider contributing as a way to celebrate with me. Every little bit will help me reach my goal. I've included information about the Children's Heart Foundation below. She was selfless and had a heart of gold. She was always thinking of ways to help others. She desired to write a children's book that would have helped young black girls and teach them things she wished she knew growing up. I wish I had someone that taught me the importance and highlights of being a young black child. That's why I want to write that book. I want black children to feel good and understand it's an honor to be black. She focused on being positive and keeping negative energy out of her life. She would burn sage around her residence. Keeping all bad energy from around myself and my home, she posted. Candace had a boyfriend, Jay, who she was deeply in love with and wanted to marry someday. They had been together for three years. On her social media account, she openly expressed her profound love and sincere gratitude towards him, acknowledging the significant role he played in her personal development and educational pursuits. She referred to Jay in many posts. My man so fine to me. I love this man. He put me in a position where I grew mentally and could educate myself. It's only right I bless him. We've been through some small trials, but nothing major enough to rip us apart. Me and Jay against the world. Not tagging him either. We don't need no nosy. I love a tall chocolate man. She carved Candy and Jay with a heart into wood and captioned the photo, until the earth stopped spinning. Candace was already planning a future together with Jay, seeing him as a lifelong partner who would support and accompany her through life's obstacles and triumphs. However, a tragic turn of events unfolded on May 14, when Candace visited Jay's apartment at Parkview Towers and Square in Detroit. Following a brief departure from the apartment, she mysteriously failed to return. Fueled by concern over her absence and the presence of her belongings still in the apartment, her loved ones alerted law enforcement and reported her missing. The following day, on Wednesday, May 15, 2019, the police were called to the Parkview Towers and Square apartment building in the 1600 block of Robert Bradby Drive after a resident noticed the presence of blood in an elevator. Police searched the area and made a gruesome discovery. They discovered the body of 27-year-old Elizabeth Candace Laird in a dumpster behind the building. During the investigation, police discovered that Candace was not a resident of the building. They spoke with her family, and they told investigators that Candace was at the gated building visiting her boyfriend. Candace's death was classified as a homicide by the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office, with the cause of death determined to be compressive asphyxia, which refers to crushing a victim until they can no longer breathe. They also reported that she was sexually assaulted. Authorities started an investigation collecting evidence from the crime scene and searching through the surveillance footage at the apartment. They questioned the boyfriend since he was the last person seen with Candace, and they ruled him out as a suspect. While searching through the footage, they noticed a man arrive to the apartments in a dark-colored vehicle, then enter the building, then later appearing to be talking on the phone. 
Further investigations confirmed that the same man had been in contact with Candace, and surveillance footage showed the two of them together inside the elevator of the apartment building. They observed the man making unwanted advances towards Candace and her trying to fight him off. He struck her violently which left traces of blood in the elevator, Candace would then be sexually assaulted, and he would then discard her body down the trash chute of the building, which is how her body ended up in the dumpster. Police identified a suspect in Elizabeth's murder, 50-year-old James Quill Cockerham. After identifying James as a suspect, officials released his name and photo and appealed to the public for assistance in locating him. He was located just 12 minutes from where Candace's body was found. He was arrested and charged with first-degree murder, torture and unlawful imprisonment in connection with Candace's murder. Cold-blooded killer off the streets tonight. Police say the man who murdered 26-year-old Elizabeth Laird now behind bars. James Quill Cockerham captured today inside a home on Stople near Joy Road on Detroit's west side. About 12 minutes from where the victim's body was found outside an apartment building near Shane and East Lafayette. Detroit Police Chief James Craig calls the suspect a career criminal. It's here investigators say he met the victim Elizabeth Laird, then allegedly raped her and threw her body in a dumpster. 50-year-old James Quill Cockerham was arrested at a house on Stople Saturday afternoon on the city's west side. He's the man Detroit police say raped and killed 26-year-old Elizabeth Laird. They found her body in a dumpster Wednesday at the Parkview Apartments on the city's east side. We pray for that family. We pray for that young lady. It should have never happened. One murder like that is one too many. Cockerham met Laird in the building's elevator, according to investigators. Chief James Craig says Detroit police worked with state and federal partners to find Cockerham, who was recently released from prison. He'd previously served time for rape. Our investigators were relentless. Uh, they continue to work. In fact, they came in today on their off day uh, following tips following leads, uh, and that's, that violent, predatory, cowardly suspect is now in custody, a career criminal. Cockerham is awaiting arraignment at the Detroit Detention Center. James Quill Cockerham remained largely silent during his appearance via video for an arraignment in the 36th District Court on Monday. He was facing charges of first-degree premeditated murder, torture, and unlawful imprisonment. In the short duration of his court appearance, he entered a plea of not guilty. Cockerham was a registered sex offender and had a long criminal history. He has been convicted of several crimes including weapons charges, criminal sexual conduct, car theft, and armed robbery. Following his arrest for suspected parole violation and murder, he was held without bond at the Detroit Detention Center, awaiting formal charges. Cockerham was later found guilty and is now serving a life sentence. Loved ones of Elizabeth Candace Laird gathered at Baldock Park to bid farewell to the 27-year-old whose life was senselessly cut short. Loved ones of Elizabeth Laird, who went by Candy, said goodbye Sunday. The 27-year-old student was killed this week on the city's east side, her body found in a dumpster. This is the man police believe is responsible, James Cockerham. He was arrested Saturday. She was caring. She was ambitious. Um, she had dreams, big dreams. Of one day becoming a nurse. Police believe Cockerham, who they say Laird did not know, attacked her in an elevator of an apartment building. It runs over and over in my head what, what I could have done to prevent this from happening to her. Laird's killing is one of four within the last week in Detroit. Two of them, police believe, could be gang-related. Investigators are looking for a black Chrysler 300 in those two fatal shootings, which occurred on the city's east side just a day apart. Every time we lose a young person in our city, the future of our of Detroit is jeopardized. Sunday morning, police found the body of a 36 year old woman. She was shot in the head. They're still searching for the shooter in that case. Sunday's vigil didn't only draw Laird's loved ones. It also drew city leaders and people who didn't even know her, like this young woman who came to show her support after a week of violence. The overwhelming message of the night take action to protect our community. The community as well, we know things. Neighborhoods and people who reside in neighborhoods know things, they know people, and we have to be the eyes and the ears for our community and speak up. What happened to Candace was especially tragic because she complained on social media about having to fight guys off of her, and you could see how frustrated she was. She posted, not trying to be funny, but I always have a hard time fighting men off me. If I say I got a man, they should understand that, but instead, this sh turns into a competition. Every time a old man try to get on me, I always end my statement with sir, so his know I think he's old perv. Be too old and know better.
It's important to pay attention because people be real creeps out here. You gotta watch a person's demeanor that will at least give you a clue on their actions. It appears that Candace has been in many uncomfortable situations with men in the past, and being alone in a tight space inside of an elevator with a man that was making unwanted advances towards her, who obviously made her uncomfortable, had to be terrifying. Candace had no idea that she was in an elevator with a sex offender with a long criminal history, who wanted to cause harm to her. At some point, I'm sure she realized she was in the presence of evil and fought hard for her life. What happened to Candace could have happened to anyone. This was not someone she was dating or even invited into her personal space. This was a criminal released back into society who preyed on others. She should have been free to visit her boyfriend without the fear of being attacked or assaulted. She should have been able to reach her goal of becoming a nurse, so she could help others. My condolences to her friends and family. She should still be here. If you ever find yourself in a situation where someone makes you feel uncomfortable, trust your instincts. If something feels off about a person or situation, trust your gut and take precautions accordingly. This might mean avoiding the elevator altogether and taking the stairs, waiting for the next elevator, or leaving the building altogether. If you are already in an elevator and you sense a potential threat or your discomfort intensifies, if you have the chance, exit the elevator as soon as possible, even if it means changing your plans or finding an alternative route. Many elevators have security cameras and emergency buttons that can be used in case of an emergency. Familiarize yourself with these features and know how to use them if needed. If you are attacked while in the elevator, hit the alarm button and as many floor buttons as possible. Do not push the stop button. Consider taking self-defense classes or carrying personal safety devices such as pepper spray or a personal alarm. While these measures are not foolproof, they can help give you a sense of control and confidence in potentially dangerous situations. Be aware of your surroundings. Take note of who else is in the elevator and what they are doing. If someone is making you feel uncomfortable, try to move away from them or create physical distance. It is unfortunate that a person has to be worried about their personal safety while just minding their own business, but there are predators out in society, and one must do whatever they can to try to keep themselves safe. And always remember, if you ever feel uneasy about getting on an elevator with someone that makes you feel uncomfortable, don't get on the elevator. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.